Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoteric, and we got another fun and random episode for you guys this Friday, and that's because we're taking a look at Operation Tiger by Taito. Now I am emulating this, and the emulation works fine, but there is no sound, but this is another one of those janky 3D arcade boards from the 90s that I am searching for for my collection. So before I get into the video, if you know of a board out there for sale, let me know, because I am a buyer. Because if you haven't noticed lately on the channel, I am into 90s 3D janky polygons with big old pixels. Before I get too far involved though, I talk about this really weird game, go ahead and hit like and subscribe and that notification bell definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we've got a Patreon link down below in the description as well. But Taito released this board and they only made one game for it and that is going to be Operation Tiger. It's in the same Operation Wolf franchise, although it doesn't have any thematic ties, but it is a like gun shooter or more specifically an XY coordinate shooter. But right off the top, I just love everything about this game. Game, even if I can't even hear it. Now I have laid in the soundtrack underneath it and I would let you listen to it, but it is copywritten and it throws up a strike, so I will let you listen to something that I think you'll enjoy when I get to the middle of the video. But this runs on the exact same processor as the Apple Pippin, the console from Apple and Bandai, and it uses in-house Taito developed 3D chips. And I think for as bad as it looks, it looks great for its time and place. This is like a really powerful PlayStation 1, and it gives me a lot of Time Crisis vibes to it. Now this game is exceedingly rare. I've never seen a cabinet for it, and for the longest time it didn't even emulate. There was only a few photographs of it, but now it works relatively well. Although I am playing on an i9-12900K, so I do have some processing power to spare. But I love this generation of light gun games and arcade games, and what I have been playing here, I absolutely love it. It is definitely some B-tier action movie business, and I am there for that in its entirety. I am very prone to liking these type of games, but the action is solid, the shooting mechanics are good, I love the setting and the theming, it just has everything I want in a game, and it is incredibly rare, and this is probably maybe the first time you have heard about the game, but if you haven't, leave me a comment down below and tell me where you heard of it or where you played it, because if you do know a cabinet somewhere in the US, I'd be very interested to hear about it, because I have not talked to anyone who knows about this game. But that's the thing I love about these rare 90s 3D games is most of them were not hits, most of them did not sell well, and most of them have been relegated to complete obscurity, and you know I love talking about the obscure on this channel. But recently my collecting habits have gone more towards trying to find games like this, so there's a big list of janky 90s 3D stuff that I am hunting down that have no captures on YouTube or barely documented. But the action in this game is just intense, it's fast paced, and it is what I love to play. You're shooting down helicopters and tanks and soldiers popping up in every different direction. It actually gives me a lot of Total Vice vibes. I'll leave a link in the description if I remember to my Total Vice video on original 3D M2 hardware. And it's funny it gives me those same vibes because the M2 ran on the PowerPC 602 chip. Granted it had a completely different GPU chip, but it feels very similar in both the look and the content and I love it because I love Total Vice. But here's the thing about Operation Tiger. I'm not just showing you this game because it is exceedingly rare and should be preserved, although that is very true. This game is actually just legit really fun. I love it. And I think if you have a chance to play it on MAME, you will love it too, even like I said, if it is slightly janky. And I don't know what it is about this graphical style. Maybe you had to grow up with it to understand that this looked better than what home consoles were doing at the time. And when you played a game like this in arcades, you were actually in impressed by what it could do. Now obviously in our modern day and age it's not as impressive but things like this were great and I love arcade hardware that uses custom chips. I mean I collect modern stuff like the Taito Type X2 and X3 but the fact that they only run on PC parts isn't as exciting as custom silicon and I do love that. Now while I said I can't let you listen to the soundtrack as it throws up some copyright strikes what I can let you listen to is what I assume the jungle level sounds like so enjoy it and I will be right back. Wink wink. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
I couldn't help myself there, but when I think of jungle music, I think of one game soundtrack, and that is Crash Bandicoot. But in reality, the music in this game is spectacular because it was made by Taito's in-house band Zuntada, and if you know anything about them, they made some of the most epic arcade soundtracks of all time. And if you don't know about them, you should definitely look them up and listen to some of the music because it is just straight awesome from start to finish. And weirdly enough, the soundtrack is available only on one place online, and I did hunt, and that is Apple Music, randomly enough. I had a friend actually download it for me and send it over via email for this video just so I could have it playing in the background, but unfortunately because Zuntada is so big, you can't just play the music without sound effects over it or else it just trips up YouTube completely. But I love the structure and flow of this game as well. Now that we're going through the jungle, we're going into the next level. What we need to do is rescue five of our comrades from this enemy base. And that is quite, quite difficult to do, probably because I'm not actually using the XY coordinate gun here. And that's why I want to find a board for this game so much, so I can actually get the good endings, I can play it better, and I can show it to everybody else. Because this isn't just a video about janky 90s 3D stuff, even though I do love that. This is also a video about how important it is to preserve things so I can make sure I can play the real board and not let her take a knife to the back right there. Because some of these games probably only got 1 or 200 units out into the world, they didn't sell well, and they faded into obscurity. It's as possible that I find a board for this game is that no boards for this game exist any longer that are up for sale. If they sold 200 and 90% of them got junked, that would leave like 20 boards left. And that's the thing about these rare 90s games is you never know when you're going to come across them, you never know if they're going to be working or not, and you never know if they're not working if you're going to be able to fix them. But I love doing everything I can to preserve them because I do think they're important, and of course I just love how weird and strange they all are. Because for every house of the dead there's an evil knight and for every time crisis there's an operation tiger which is to say a game very similar and almost as good that did not get the love and attention in arcades it deserved and therefore nobody really knows they exist any longer and if you are into operation wolf that franchise from taito this is the last game in the series and even though they don't have a ton in common if you want to play the entire series from start to finish you got to play operation tiger 2 and it is impressive that this runs in main because it's not just is emulating power pc instruction sets on that 603 it's also emulating custom taito asics for the gpus and i love the era of arcade games where the big arcade makers were still developing silicon in-house now sometimes they had partners but it's not just borrowing the gpu from a playstation one even though taito did that for other boards it's making custom in-house chips and that is just so much fun to see because a lot of this stuff could have been home consoles if the companies were just a little bit bigger but moving on into the game, once you get out into this open area, every light gun game has to have a vehicle section. It's just basically one of the commandments of light gun games. This is one of my favorite stages because everything's intense, everything's moving quickly, and there is a ton to shoot. Now you might notice that there's a little bit of hitching in the video, and that's because any time there's an explosion, the emulation lags ever so slightly. And that's why I also want to find an original board so I can show this game running in full speed. But for how it runs in MAME, it is hyper impressive and you can play the game from start to finish and if you just pop that Zuntada soundtrack on in the background or in headphones it's kind of like you're actually playing the real thing and then once you get out here there are airboats running over sand I don't know if that's a thing that works or not I'm not really a physicist who understands the friction between sand and air but it seems like it's probably a bad idea as far as warfare is concerned but what do I really know what I do know is Operation Tiger is fun. It is that classic 90s janky, really pixelated 3D that if you grew up with it, you remember it fondly. And maybe you did see this game in arcades, but you tell me, have you ever played Operation Tiger on an original machine before? Do you know where there's an original cabinet for Operation Tiger? Because this is the type of thing I do keep track of where they are, and maybe if I'm going there someday, I will make a special trip to play the board because I do want to play this originally, and I really, really do hope that I can find an original board in working order for this game because it is now on my most coveted PCB list of all time. You're probably wondering why that is and that's just the way I work. But I love showing you guys these rare experiences and I love telling you that you can check them out too because if you got a powerful enough machine, you too can go play Operation Tiger after this video is over. But that's the thing about arcade gaming. 
for as many famous hits as there are out there that everyone remembers, there are way more games that were really good that barely anyone remembers, and Operation Tiger falls squarely into that camp. But I will find a PCB for it one day, I will buy it and I will show it to you. And if you have one for sale, let's just say, I don't know, 500 bucks cash off the top. See you guys next time, Bye bye